Welcome to episode 308 of the Help Me With Different podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs and Security First IT, and joining me is Donna Grinlow Card. And yes, I do talk fast. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? Because we've just been carrying on a conversation, and then you ripped that one off. <laughs> Every time I do the opener quick, I always, for some reason, think about Krista and the software and how it won't catch my words because I speed through that means. <laughs> That, that would be Elizabeth. Elizabeth and, does that piece? Yes. Oh, poor Elizabeth. Can't keep up with who's in charge of what anymore. Nope, I, I don't. So <laughs> you're just throwing stuff everywhere. Do this, do this, do this, do this. <laughs> it's, it's survival, man. It's, it's survival. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So today we're going to be talking about maturity models matter. I. The irony is not lost on us. <laughs> I know. I mean, we take maturity seriously on this podcast. <laughs> uh, but before we get into today's show, we do want to talk about the HIPAA boot camp because mm-hmm. it is um, it's almost full. <laughs> well, right. technically, we're, we're at the point where we have to decide because we have the what we consider okay this is the target number we have more than that confirmed already we have one more than that confirmed so if you want in we may start waitlisting people we've we've never been full like this two over two months out Mm -hmm. so maybe somebody will drop out um and if you're interested in being waitlisted or trying to get and we might if you, pay, be- if you pay double, we'll push somebody out. <laughs> uh, uh, that's great. I love it. <laughs> uh, David is your, your the, the one chick in the nest that you, everybody's afraid of. Um, but yes, we, um, uh, we're excited. It's quite an eclectic group. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, talking with everybody. So we'll see. Um, if you're interested, though, you should probably send us an email. Right now, you could still sign up, but it won't be long before we'll say you can't sign up. You need to wait list. So yeah, the boat's almost full. We're starting to take yeah. on water. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I gotta do I gotta do some math and, and decide because you know if we have it gets down to not just the number of people but the number of organizations and some bring multiple people and so I gotta do some math to decide how many more. But we're at that point and um we're excited about that. Mm-hmm. I think it's awesome. Yeah. It's amazing. <clears throat> so right, if you're sorry. signed up, yay team. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, so a great idea for everybody. How about sharing the podcast with somebody this week? Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Say something nice (laughs) about me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, and also a reminder, if you don't know, we, we do post the videos of our podcast on, on YouTube now. So, uh, I haven't haven't mentioned that in a few weeks, but, um, yeah, if you want to see our crazy facial expressions as we record the podcast we do record the video part of it so yeah well now i get those pictures of weird pop where david pauses it there's stupid looks on my face and i just get a a text message with a picture you know um there's a story behind that i I, I don't know how it started but me and (laughs) when they you know when they started having it where you could pause live tv Mm mm-hmm you know, for us, I was like, oh my gosh, you can pause on TV. Yeah, so yeah crazy. I remember that. Um, but <laughs> still do. Ooh, but, bad pause. <laughs> I know. So, my wife and I, apparently, we were like super bored one night. And, and so, we just would sit there and just keep pausing the TV to catch the stupidest faces. <laughs> and then we would take a picture of it with our phone and send it to people. Uh... And, um, and so, uh, as I'm editing these videos down, if I catch Donna with a crazy face, I'll snapshot it and send it to her. <laughs> it's awesome. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the thing we do down here to entertain ourselves. It's like, look at this stupid face I made. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So thanks again to our donors. We definitely appreciate your support. If you want to support this podcast, 
head on over to helpmewithhippa.com and you can donate there. Help keep the lights on. Because <laughs> we right. need that. Yeah. And we got an email from uh, Andrea or Andrea, depending on how fancy you are. <laughs> 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 and it reads, hi, double Ds. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> um, your I told you so phrase should be Double D done told y'all. <laughs> <laughs> DD done told y'all. Yeah. DD done told y'all. Done Love told your show. Best regards, Andrea. Andrea. <laughs> Andrea. Yeah, whatever it is, if you're fancy. Uh, but we appreciate that, that. And I was like, yeah, we did ask if anybody had some good ideas. So then uh, I remembered, uh, you know, another listener who gave us the phrase, knock me down and steal my teeth, which is <laughs> still one of my most favorite moments. So I think that we, uh, I propose uh, that we mix them together and we have, well, knock me down and steal my teeth. Double D done told y'all. <laughs> You'll mix them together. <laughs> I'm going to mix them together so that we can have, you know, I told you so. It's just so mundane for us. Mm -hmm. you know so next time we have uh something we're we're, we're gonna use that i think we're, we're gonna have to work on it maybe we'll get something that goes with david's board so that we can have something like hippa say what yeah hippa say what <laughs> <laughs> i have to get somebody to record knock me down and steal my teeth double d done told y'all <laughs> <laughs> We could do that. We could definitely do that. <laughs> we get your wife to record it for us. Oh, I'll be yeah. perfect. Well, <laughs> we ought to do, we need to do a push for our listeners to do an opening to the show. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, my name is David and out of whatever, South Carolina, because that's where I'm at. <laughs> and you're listening to the Helping with Hippo podcast. And then yeah. we'll just start putting listeners um, at the beginning of the show. Yeah, because we so, need some new ones. We used um, to record them when we did the uh, boot camps in person. Yeah. And we haven't been able to do that now in years, literally in a yeah. couple of years. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll see if I can find a way to, to put some type of instructions together or something on the website to do it. Used to, you, you know, it was it was a technology challenge, but nowadays you can just pick up your phone and just record an audio voice and send it in an email. So it's not that difficult to do, but um, I'll see if I can come up with a way to make it easier for people to do that. I'd love to have some of our listeners to, to open the show for us. Yeah. It's yeah. We're due. We're due with new. We're due for new. <laughs> so if you want to be the new hook us up. Yep. So um, as of right now, I don't have anything else to say about that. <laughs> you it's can email me idea. if you want. Yeah. It's an idea. It just come up. So um so i don't have a, a site to send you to or anything but um but i'm gonna put something together because i like to give our listeners an opportunity to do that all right there we all go all right ready for yeah let's do it you ready yep all right you do it hip up hey, what? there you go <laughs> all right so we're gonna uh, do a follow-up on the status of the scripts attack and if you join us a few episodes back we did uh, somewhat of a live play-by-play -play <laughs> of yeah. a of a cyber attack on uh, Scripps Healthcare out in California, uh, and it was oh. it, it was it, a play-by-play -play of how uh, the discussions on social media by their patients. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were reading them as they were coming in, and I, yeah. I it was very um, educational. It was the most somber show we've ever had. <laughs> I know. I felt so tight. You know, it was very trying when you read how those people were feeling. Mm -hmm. So the good news is they're, they're, they're beyond that. They're improving. Now, this attack began May 1st, I want to say. And here we are recording this on June 6th. So a month later. They're still trying to recover and they started notifying patients and they say they're notifying 147,000 patients. The good news is it's not all their patients. Mm -hmm. The good news is they didn't get into the, didn't get 
and exfiltrate data from the EHR. Mm -hmm. um, this is just other stuff. Yeah. So it could have been a whole lot worse. Mm -hmm. It could have been. But <laughs> this brings a lot of points to light. <laughs> Let me count the ways. Yes. So as with everything, we want to learn, mm -hmm. especially learning from other people's problems. <laughs> it's a whole lot uh, mm -hmm. more manageable than learning from your own. Even yes. though for some reason, learning from your own seems to stick around. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about some of the things that this case brings to light and kind of give some reminders for everyone to think about, because, you know, it's more than looking at your backup and, you know, especially when you're planning for these incidents, oftentimes people don't understand where to look and what to do uh, what for to think things. About. Yeah. What to think about. So let's take a look at five points you put together uh, on that. And we talked about this, this first one as it was happening, which is a communications plan <laughs> because uh, Facebook became part of the communications plan that was not planned <laughs> to be <laughs> used, I'm sure, uh, because you had staff communicating back and forth with each other, staff communicating with the patients. Um, it's funny because you, you see in the initial uh first day or two of it you kind of see all that happening and then you see it stop so you know somebody stepped in and was like no more of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah dm me your details first what are your details was happening then dm me your details because somebody said oh we shouldn't put that in public uh and then that was just completely gone call this number <laughs> yeah so they they learned as they went on on some of the communication stuff apparently but, and they um, may have had a plan. The problem was everybody didn't understand the plan if it existed. Yeah. And, and that's common where a core set of people, maybe the instant response team, they know what to do, but all the other people don't really know what's going on. And so when all the crap's hit the fan, <laughs> you know, as I often say, you don't rise to the occasion, you fall to your level of preparation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's that. So it, it was um, was obvious they needed that. So let's just say that you need to make sure you can communicate, you know, staff, partners, and patients, your business partners, all of that. You don't want, you want them all, know, everyone to know how that communication is going to happen. But then you also have to have a plan for external contacts like law enforcement and news because there were several cases where the news stations were reporting we've received the email that was sent to the employees well you know if you're going to send an email to employees it's going to go to the press it's going to go yeah uh, so why not make it not look like you're hiding something right <laughs> so you have a plan to talk to the press about it as well as the employees you put a, like a PS. If you're the press, please destroy. <laughs> and then we have to have a plan to treat patients without access to any systems. And you know, the average was 10 days. I think that number keeps growing mm -hmm. of how long you need to plan to be. You need to plan to completely be without technology of any significance for two weeks that's rough mm -hmm. and by the way you need to plan that with all the people that normally manage how you would work busy dealing with the reason that you can't get to anything mm -hmm. so you're not going to have those resources either right <clears throat> that step up thing has to happen <laughs> no. but you have to plan for someone to step up that's right all right this <clears throat> next one Near and dear to my heart. Yeah, it's your fave. It is. So do not assume that all your PHI is in your EHR. Now, <laughs> as I hear Donna going, <sighs> there um, seems to be a couple of misconceptions that we run into often as we're doing our paid jobs. <laughs> the first misconception is all of our patient information 
is within our EHR. There is nothing else that is PHI outside of our EHR. Okay. Mm. Wrong. <laughs> wrong. What was that episode where you just kept going wrong? <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this, the deal with scripts, 147,000 patients were part of that breach and none of that information came out of the EHR. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Point number two. <laughs> uh, I love it when I hear things like, we have a spreadsheet that has patients' names and email addresses and phone numbers, but we don't have PHI. <laughs> <laughs> and I just have to say, you don't understand what PHI is, if that's what you think. Uh, because yes. that is one of the 18 identifiers of PHI. And if you don't know what those are, um, visit our website. I think we have them in there somewhere. <laughs> well, you better put them there now, buddy. Yeah. Uh, mm. Donald will put them on this, uh, on the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is important to note just, you know, a element, like if all I had was medical record number, I just had a number floating around that is an element but i can't identify that i can't tie that to an individual and to health information but if i have a spreadsheet that comes from that all the metadata says it came from scripts health and it has all these names that say patient name <laughs> mm -hmm. it is now officially phi even if it just has this is a uh, scripts help health and here's the email address i can tie that to an individual and it's now phi well i think where some of the misconception comes in is they don't know what the acronym stands for some mm -hmm. people think it's patient health information mm -hmm. and, and so because they think it's patient health information when it's not patient health information <laughs> then it confuses them but it's not phi is protected health information mm -hmm. and uh, as we said, there are 18 identifiers as to what information constitutes protected health information. So you should well, know that. To clarify, they don't say that's what constitutes it. They say if you took all of these out, right, then it you would wouldn't be PHI. Yep. Right. So they don't say these are. They just say without these, it's not. Right. That's, and what's number 18? <laughs> Everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Any other identifying piece of information. <laughs> yeah. So um so it's a good idea to post these, you know, where people can understand them and go over them. I mean, some of them are obvious things. So other ones you're gonna look at it and go, what? Really? <laughs> Their IP address? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's the listed. uh VIN of the car. Yeah. So there's some stuff in there. Yeah. But but understand what that is. The other part too is I think oftentimes you're using a cloud-based EHR. You think all of your stuff's going in there, but what you don't realize is that your staff is pulling reports down and they're pulling uh, PDF files that's got patient information in there and and they're pulling all this down and they're putting it in all these areas. I mean, it's all Have over the place. Have you looked in downloads? Have you looked in Windows temp? Have you looked in the cache and temp of your browsers have you you know there's yeah it's like you say that anybody that tells you that oh there's none mm -hmm. but they've never gone to look you know you're gonna find it oh it's i've never yet found a time when i did not find it when they said it's only in the hr and i always so far <laughs> always find it somewhere else right if <laughs> the they've never I'm, the only reason they'll say that is they've never gone to look yeah well the one i love the most is when i said do you ever take uh, PHI off premises. And they're like, no, we'll never do that. And then this other lady in the back room goes, well, I do work from home sometimes. <laughs> okay. You do that remotely? <laughs> no, I just copy everything to this USB drive in my pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> you see, you see everybody in the room going, we didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's not good. It's not good at yeah. all. You always know where that's going to go. Yeah. Or uh, there's another one where a, a practice manager called me one day and she says, I'm going to kill my doctor. I'm like, what? He has a whole bunch of patient information in record format or paper format. 
he decides he's going to take them home and destroy them. But they've been in his car for a week. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, ooh, that's not good. No. <laughs> so, uh, you know, not, not a breach, but wow, talking about risky. <laughs> well, make sure it's not a convertible. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, how many times have we read that report where, yeah. you know, uh, paper files were stolen out of a car or uh, mm. I have a dumpster. <laughs> Can you steal from a dumpster? <laughs> it's not stealing, I guess, when you're taking the trash. I guess not. Yeah. All right. So I think we covered that one enough. If you have any questions, let us know. Yeah. Well, right. and notifying patients is the next piece. Yeah. Remember, we were reading that day and everybody's like, why aren't they telling us? They're supposed to tell us. Yeah. No, they, <laughs> they're not supposed to tell you, but they need to understand that's what the patients are asking. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that that's what they're going to be asking. So don't drag out the need to notify as soon as they knew they've started notifying, but also the um, perception of patients is you should tell me right away, mm -hmm. which that tells you multiple things about the people that wait until the 59th day. Uh, but also it is uh, know that they're going to be asking that. So have that in your communication plan that you are evaluating. And that as soon as you identify specific patient details that were released that may have been uh, breached, then you will start notifying. Yeah. Yeah. We saw people posting on Facebook. It's been two weeks and I haven't got anything in the mail yet <laughs> notifying me. And I'm like, like, they're still not up and running. They haven't even been able to figure that out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, people don't know that. Um, and so that's one of those balancing acts between transparency and and not telling everybody every single thing that's happening, because, mm -hmm. you know, there are some confidential things that, that go on that you don't want to post publicly. Right. And so we're not saying do that. What we're saying is make an attempt to explain the big picture. Yeah. So that I guess set, have set the expectations. Have, yeah. There you go. Set yeah. some expectations. Yeah. So anyway, they, they need to be prepared to be, even though you have the downtime of two weeks, 10 days, whatever you should plan for, at least 10, you have that downtime, but then recovery weeks, even months, mm -hmm. you know, six months from now, they'll still be trying to figure out some stuff. So you need to be understanding in your plan that it won't be like waving a magic wand. Yeah. And then we got news yesterday. <laughs> bless their hearts. Just bless their hearts. Is this the new COO? Yeah. Oh, my that, gosh. I know. Bless their hearts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, the, somebody takes the job at uh, the Central Florida, University of Florida, Central Florida Hospitals, there's a couple of them, and the new CEO, COO takes over at the Villages Hospital as the ransomware attack is hitting, like the next day or the day of. It's like, welcome to your new job. Here, better cover your hair. It'll be on fire in a minute. <laughs> I know. It's, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I think part of me uh, would be like, uh, I'll start next week. <laughs> yeah, cl clearly, I did not think this through. Um, sorry, I forgot about another engagement. So yeah, I'm uh, sick. <clears throat> yeah. I can't come and, in. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah you, you're walking tough. in. You're walking in. You're the the chief operational officer, and you've not been part of the culture. You've not been part of the instant response training, you know, nothing. And all of a sudden everybody's running around and ransomware attack, ransomware attack. You got to assume that from this point forward though, cybersecurity and, and preparation and planning will be a primary objective of the COO. Yeah. 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 That will make an impression. Yeah. Day so. one, literally. So, oh, I bless their hearts, though, because they're going to learn it the way, you know, they should see if somebody at Scripps can take 10 minutes to tell them, if you knew now, <laughs> then what you know now? Because I am never one to say, well, let's don't ask, you know, ask somebody that's been there. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll have to watch that one, see how it goes. But, man, 
I just got to say one more time, bless her heart. The lady mm-hmm. that took that job, bless her heart. Yeah. Um, we should get her on the podcast <laughs> after this is over. She don't have time right now. <laughs> yeah. It'll probably be next year before she would be willing. <laughs> um, and then of course there was another right of access, uh, uh, settlement agreement. Yep. Resolution agreement done with the diabetes endocrinology and lipidology center as a West Virginia practice. Um, the 19th, 19th, uh, right of access that that's a lot. And mm-hmm. that's just since September, 2019. So that's a lot. Yep. But I thought that, uh, the well i mean the story they give us you know in the press release and the resolution agreement is in august 2019 a complaint comes in uh from a patient who had requested the records of her son in july 2019 um minor child uh not the adult son (laughs) and um so the net of it is then October, they opened an investigation, and the bottom line is until May 2021, so nearly two years, mm-hmm. when they did this resolution agreement is when the patient finally got, or the, the uh, mother finally got the, her son's records. So Robin Sue's quote. <laughs> and I agree. Her quote, ready. trying to bring it home. You ready? Go. <laughs> it should not take a federal investigation before HIPAA covering entity provides a, pa- a parent with access to their child's medical records. <laughs> covered entities owe it to their patients to provide timely access to medical records. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah. So we talk, you know, one of the jokes we always say down here is it takes an act of Congress. <laughs> Apparently for some things, it takes a federal investigation <laughs> to get True things that. moving. <laughs> here's, here's the interesting part. Maybe you can help me understand this. If the investigation started October 2019, why did it still take them until May of 2021 to do to give them the records? I would think that if I got some type of notification of an investigation, I'd be like throwing out information everywhere. Yes, you would think. So I I, I don't understand I that. that. Yeah, one of the things that is on these cases, they don't give us the details. And a lot of that probably to prevent us from figuring out who patients are, which is, you know, a tricky thing. So we don't get a lot of those details. Um, Knowing how the investigations work, I still don't understand why it took that long or what the problem was. Um, You know, the $5,000 payment, again, they're not trying to get the money. It's the two-year cap. And it's pretty standard, Mm -hmm. but I really would, I would like to get more example information to understand in, instead of in general timeliness. Okay. Well, we get it that it's timeliness issues, but why, what Mm -hmm. was causing the timeliness issue so that I can make sure we don't have those. Yeah. I would love to get that information. Especially when there's, especially when there's an investigation and there's so much time between because I'm assuming if the investigation started in October, that somewhere not long after that, the practice should have been probably notified. Well, and they probably gave him a break during COVID. The practice was notified in October. Okay. So they tell you when they notified the practice and they gave them a request for information, standard 10 business days, give me a response, whatever yeah. happened. And that would have then, brought them right into the beginning of COVID. Okay. So, I, I get, I get the COVID thing, but May 2020. <laughs> well, I know I, the OCR wasn't able to push them, but why the practice didn't take care of the problem. And that's what I want to understand is did, did they just have this attitude? It's ours, not theirs. Or did they have the, we can't find it mm. or, you know, wh- what was the delay? Right. That's what I want to yeah. understand. Yeah, that's what we don't we don't know that. Yeah. So that that's what I wish we understood more about how the timeliness became the issue. What was the root of the problem? Timeliness is obvious. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Well, we got to get moving if we're going to talk about maturity model matters. <laughs> All right. Throw your last one in there. Oh, God. <laughs> this is just because it was like I was doing my my uh, research and there was a new SCOTUS ruling about the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act and how it's applied in cases. And, uh, you know, it, I'm a nerd. I have to read these things. Plus, it, it does sometimes impact other things. But the point it was making is that if someone is misusing or abusing their abuse their their access that they are given for their job it doesn't fall under this particular statute that's all it's saying it doesn't say that abuse of privilege is not a problem it just says that it doesn't fall under this statute and so i was studying the discussions of it and sure enough it wasn't long before somebody wanted to bring hip into it in fact i was just about to say hi i'm surprised and then <sighs> I saw this <laughs> and, and they hashtagged it. How does this apply to hashtag hip hop? -up 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 -up? <sighs> and then the good news is somebody knows the answer. So they reply hip hop -up -up violations of their own crimes and have their own fines and consequences. Thank you for the hip hop -up 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 knowledge. It just at that point I had to quit reading. It's so frustrating for the answers. Anyway, you hashtag it hip hop up up up. <laughs> when somebody says they can't find our podcast, I say it's one P, and everybody <laughs> goes, "Oh yeah." And we're going. We have to buy. Help me with hip hop up up. <laughs> Only to say have a page that says. It is not hip hop. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. You misspelled <laughs> it. Click here to redirect to the correct spelling. <laughs> uh, and people be like, it's just a typo. Oh, I get that if it's one time, but you're hashtagging it and responding. <laughs> no. And if you send me an email and you mention it four times, it's not a typo. I'm just saying. I, I'm anyway. making it, I'm making a note right now to buy that domain. <laughs> all the misspellings yeah which honestly we may have already bought it we just hadn't done anything with it <laughs> i'm bad about buying domains <laughs> I, I know you know like, oh yeah i got that domain really well when we started the podcast you said how about we call it help me with hip i already have that domain okay that that's how we got our name people he <laughs> bought the domain in advance and it was just one he already had so <laughs> all righty okay. Get into the meat and taters. <laughs> meat and taters. <laughs> All right. Tater. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the maturity model, um, which we obviously follow. The last time we talked about this was like 100 episodes ago. <laughs> well, not the okay. last time, but when we first started talking about it. So well, we uh, looked at there's maturity model, maturity assessments of you know, how things are working and your training program and understanding how effective it is. And then your HIPAA program maturity. We, those were episodes 206 and 222 way back in 2019. Mm -hmm. I know. And, you know, this stuff's starting to age us more. <laughs> but uh, this year and the next coming years, uh, there's a lot of conversations and we're uh, going to try to help people who, uh, you know, it's like you never know when stuff's going to come up with conversation and we want our listeners to be able to go, well, that's blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another acronym you got to remember. Yeah. CMMC, CMMC, CMMC. You'll hear people say CMMC. Yeah, which is tough for us because around here, one of the hospital systems is CMC. <laughs> oh, so just the C M M C. So instead of the hip hop -hop -hop issue, yeah. you have the M M issue. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, <laughs> but what's happening is the Department of Defense has long had these requirements for their contractors to meet certain guidelines, and and those have been being uh, gently applied to require them to say, yes, we do FedRAMP or we do this or we do that. And now 
they have uh, come out with. This has been developed and, and proposed in 2019, came out in 2020. Now they're going to start implementing it. And it's the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification, CMMC. And you can look it up and learn a lot about it, but uh, there's a bazillion articles about it. I added a link to the one I found that I thought was most helpful from a basic perspective, which is on the CSO, CISO online link, uh, where it explains what defense contractors need to know because this is about defense contractors, which might make you say, why are you talking about that on a HIPAA show? Mm -hmm. Because we help you everything. No, I'm just... <laughs> 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 the, the, the thing is, is that everyone is going to be talking about this, um, mostly because, remember, this was proposed before solar winds, before ransomware has gotten so bad, before all of these things. And everybody's now really saying, how do we make cybersecurity in the supply chain a more important issue in order for you to work with us um it does have some really interesting things and the concept is uh it you know there's tons of maturity models that have been out there uh, all along and going back to like early 2000s people started talking about defining maturity models and everybody keeps adding their own little twist to it we need to standardize that's why you're going to hear CMMC brought up because it does cover the defense industry and everybody's like, well, it, you know, they kind of need security. And <clears throat> so you have to be certified by a certifying body, which doesn't, it, 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 you can't even become a certified certifier yet. Classes don't start until the fall. Uh, but the, the whole concept is there are five levels of maturity. Maturity level one, they call basic maturity. And then it goes all the way up to, yeah, you can trust us with all the really super secret stuff at level five. UFOs. Yeah. <laughs> UFOs. 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 Uh, but uh, the important part is that they call level one basic cyber hygiene. Wait, we just talked about what is cyber hygiene, mm -hmm. right? So they're they're tying it into what everybody's talking about on the hygiene concepts, and then level two is intermediate cyber hygiene. Level three is good cyber hygiene. Those are the 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 big ones, right? That you can get to. And right now they're looking for rolling it out and expecting people to meet level one. So this year fiscal year 2021 they plan on having 15 contractors that they make meet level one next year they'll be 75 and they'll want them to meet level three and then they'll bring in 250 then 325 all the way up to fiscal year 2025 where they say 475 contractors will be selected to meet these requirements in the rollout and then of course then after that it's 30,000 vendors so you would think it was as big as healthcare but it doesn't even scratch the surface as far as the vendors and the the breadth of the healthcare world mm -hmm. but these uh concepts that they have and and i'd like a lot of it points to a nist guide 800-171 but to reach these maturity levels you have to do 800-171 plus more on each of the maturity levels. And they identify in level one, there are 17 cybersecurity practices that you would have to show that you're meeting. And that means you got to prove it. <laughs> and uh, level two, there's 72 practices. When you get to three through five, you got 130, 156, and 171. Wow. So, I'm going to point out what might be obvious to most of us, but not everyone, is that to do HIPAA, you've got to be at least level three. Mm. 
would be my guess. Right? Uh, I mean, you can't say I have intermediate hygiene. Yeah, I mean, we talk about hip as the floor, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so this kind of this is the starting point. Well, with CMMC, there's they're they're going, hey, we're gonna start you even lower than that. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like us in the boot camp where we go, okay, HIPAA's got one P. Let's start there. <laughs> <laughs> if you know how to spell HIPAA, you don't know HIPAA, you know how to spell HIPAA. That's that's one. <laughs> we, we, we want to be clear. <laughs> The first indicator that we shouldn't believe what you're telling us is that you don't know how to spell it. But yeah, I, I agree with you. The HIPAA would be would be three, you know. And and we often tell people that again, if you want it to be good, then that's fine. But you really want to strive for a whole lot more than good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that the prescription, as you would say, for HIPAA, I mean, level one wouldn't even meet the bare minimum HIPAA requirements. Is my guess. Level mm -hmm. two, when you read through this, and granted, there's not been any kind of true cross-reference so that you could match it up uh, because it is looking at things differently. I see it as level two would meet your bare minimums of HIPAA. Mm -hmm. Level three would mean you're actually doing what you're supposed to do. And that's where I would tell, uh, you know, everybody they need to go. But uh, I thought it was interesting in the assessment guide for level one, where they give you the list of things that you're supposed to make sure you're doing uh, for level one. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> for all those people who say, oh, I'm a small business. I can't do this. Um, and, and I have had more recently conversations outside of HIPAA with companies like, you're telling me that I need to like make sure we have computers that are up to date. I, I don't have time for that. Um, I understand that you don't have time for that, but if you want to have security, you're going to have to find the time. Mm -hmm. It's the way of the world. And it's like shocking to these people. So you think it's hard to get healthcare people to do it. You should try talking to somebody that does market research, which I just did. Anyway, the text says the CMC in Belip. See, we're already having problems. <laughs> The CMMC assessment methodology follows a data-centric security process that applies the practices equally regardless of the contractor's size, constraints, or complexity. All CMMC levels are achievable by small, medium, and large contractors. Mm. Well, bam. Mic drop. <laughs> All you got to do is just take CMMC out and put in HIPAA. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know, and, and again, you know, hiccup, same concept that mm -hmm. the small, medium, large, and uh, there's a new, the, the SIS 20, there's a new one that's come out, the version eight, and they now have implementation groups. So you've got uh, level one, two, and three, even with those now. So we're going to, we're going to see this a transition mm -hmm. and in healthcare, <clears throat> which is, you know, how we need to tie this all back together. Um, last fall, HC3, which is who 405D operates under, uh, healthcare, cyber security, something, cyber, I don't remember, uh, control, I, HC3, we'll have a link to it. <laughs> There's too much in my brain. But they did a presentation on using some version of maturity models for healthcare uh, to HHS. And, uh, you know, there's no doubt it makes sense. Um, the, NS, uh, the NIST CSF, it does have implementation tiers. Uh, I don't necessarily, they're, they're a lot more gray than what the CMMC says, are you doing this? Yes or no? Not, do you have policies? <laughs> mm -hmm. Whole different world. Um, and, you know, Cardin, our assessments have been doing this for years. Um, but it's, of course, a formula that I made up in my own way of taking information from multiple sources, tying it back together and saying, okay, what would, what, qualifies as level zero, one, two, like that. 
same concepts. Um, you know, and you start with chaos. We have a chaotic approach to social security. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes back to our risk analysis where we say what's your plan now how are you doing on that plan hello that's the maturity model concept is it not mm -hmm. one would think so our model expects you to be everything should be at level three or higher same concept the middle level or higher mm -hmm. and uh, you know in the most basic sense our my method was for every plan that you have, you need to have documentation, training, and an incident response plan, even to say, these are things we're not going to worry about. Mm -hmm. But if it happens, use this plan. And everything that's a high risk, you should be mature with. So I, th I, I don't know about your thoughts, because I know you and I, haven't even had a chance to talk CMMC until you read this today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are your I'm, thoughts? I mean, I think it's great. And I think that um, even though it's, you know, something that's outside of the, uh, the HIPAA healthcare sector, I do, I do think we can implement this. Uh, it's, it's the same thing that we do with some of the other things. We, we look outside of what healthcare is doing to, to try to figure out what's working in other areas. And can we, include that in what we're trying to do. I yeah. think this is going to help that. That's it's one of the things that we've kind of missed. We've gotten to the point where we we started breaking things down into small, medium, and large, which, you know, that's one of the things that we complained about for years is, you know, people are saying, I'm too small, or what am I supposed to do? What am I not supposed to do? And then you got, you know, you kind of got the reverse side. You got the big companies are going, well, you know, <laughs> what are we supposed to be doing? Because <laughs> we're big. Yeah. So we got we're too that, big to do that. <laughs> yeah. So we got that part figured out um, to, to a degree. I think we still have some people coming in and they're trying to push these little small medical practices into doing some crazy stuff on the technology side and putting in, you know, they got three workstations and are putting in a server because somebody said, you can't be HIPAA compliant if you're not having an Active Directory server. <clears throat> Wrap our tools. Um, so, um <laughs> salesperson <laughs> yeah somebody trying to sell something to you um but you know now we're going further than that to say not only are we are we breaking it down by small medium and large but let's look at how you can attain obtain certain levels of that you know you're starting with step one step two step three and and you're going from there and it's, it's doing the whole thing that we talked about years ago, which is how do you do HIPAA? You how know, do you eat an elephant? Yeah, one step at a time. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing is they're putting these steps in so that people can cannot look at, oh my God, we got to be at level five. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, they're like, just, just get to level one. Okay. Don't, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I would see how far I could like jump up to the step, you know? Can I jump from the bottom to step four? <laughs> um, you know, and sometimes you could, and sometimes you'd face plant. <laughs> I was going to say, how many times you face plant? <laughs> but that's not the way it's made. The steps aren't made to, to be approached that way. They're made yep. to be approached step one, step two, step three, and then eventually you get to where you're going. <laughs> and that's what this is doing. <laughs> Indeed. So I, I see it as it's the way well again i've been doing it this way for years not this way but the concept mm -hmm. for years because i believe this is where we need to go it's how we can tell what we're really doing and uh obviously we're going to be in incorporating more and more of these kinds of things that are coming out is as soon as i find an appropriate method for applying those concepts to what we do but again, we're not the people that you go to if you want to check the box and welcome to the lobby of HIPAA compliance. <laughs> yeah, you're not even you're not even in uh, the first floor. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think this also may help solve the problem. I don't know. Only time will tell. But you know how people often skip steps in HIPAA. They, oh, like, yeah. We, I, we have a we have a HIPAA program. We follow HIPAA. And then you just and then you say where's your risk assessment? And they're like, oh, we haven't done a risk assessment. 
I'm like, oh, that's step one. How, do you, how are <laughs> well, you we telling the me? policies and procedures? That's exactly. all you need to do. Because they, they did what I did as a kid and they jumped from the ground to step three. <laughs> you skipped one and two. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not how this works. No. Right. And so oftentimes that's what I find. Yes, we have a HIPAA program and here's our policies and procedures. Blah. And then oh, where's your risk management plan? I don't have that either. What? <laughs> <laughs> where's the nearest wall that i can beat my head on <laughs> yeah i agree and and i think that uh you know uh i know that where we're at right now in uh, the 40d task group is the trying 4OD. to get the uh, four or five d this always the, happens at the end the, 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 WD40, the, the wd40 task group wd40 <laughs> <laughs> we need a new name everybody could remember uh so but uh the work that we're doing now is finalizing all the updates that need to be made to the original documents to include a lot of new things i mean those came out in 2018 they were uh you know started in 2017 so there's a lot mm -hmm. and uh once those roll i think you know, we've talked a lot about what our next steps are going to be. And based on some of the things that, you know, we, we see happening elsewhere between the executive order and this coming from the DOD, we're going to see more and more companies, regardless of their industry, needing to do these kinds of things. And just as I told other people, Hiccup is good. It, it is a great place for somebody to start. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to do sys 20, do hiccup because yeah. it, it, it's, it's that starting place that will get you to that level one. Mm -hmm. And by the time you've done those, then we're able to go, okay, let's check your maturity. Right. Yeah. The, the hardest part that we see with anything in compliance is just getting started. Mm -hmm. and that's just the hardest piece. And you know, again, there's multiple reasons is people, people are like, I don't know where to start, or this is overwhelming because, you know, they pull out the, the, the 5,000 page manual of how they need to do this. <laughs> I know that's when we do everything. We break it down. We break it down into little pieces on purpose. Everybody's like, it's taking so long. Well, you do not want me to give you everything at once. Cause that will never get done. Yeah. Just do well, what I give you. And then I'll give you more. I love it when people say, how long do you think it'll take me to get compliant? <laughs> and I always do the air quotes. Um, and I, I laugh because I'm like, let's just get to step one first. <laughs> it's, it's not a destination. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it doesn't yeah. work quite like that. But if I told operational you it's gonna, standard. Yeah. If I told you it's going to be two or three years, you'd be like, I ain't doing that. <laughs> Yeah. Let's just do this one thing at a time. Yep. All right. So I'm looking forward to getting to spend more time with this and see where it's going, but clearly we've got a few other things to do, mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to go in another episode and we'll, we'll get into this, but for now, at least our listeners are in the loop Yep. when it comes to this and, uh, as it comes up, you uh, can at least speak to it if anyone asks you about it. But yeah, I know what CMMC is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's I'm that all thing, over that. It's that thing that somebody put together. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, go listen to the episode that you just read the title to and listen to the first bits. Yep. There you go. And uh, as, a, as a party note, HC3, uh, Health Sector Cybersecurity Coordination Center. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is our show for today, folks. Thanks for listening. Please share this out on your favorite social media site. Remember to rate our podcast. Give us a review. We love the reviews. <laughs> we always need your help spreading the word. And remember, well, Donna and myself, the HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. <laughs>